ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها اللهم صل وسلم وأنعم وأكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وملاذنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الأولين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن من الأعمال التي لا يحبها الله الكبر والكبر خلق يزينه الشيطان لضعفاء النفوس فينظرون للناس نظرة احتقار واستعلاء وقد عرف الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم الكبر بأنه إنكار الحق واحتقار الناس والقرآن الكريم يخبر عن قصص كثيرة عن المتكبرين كقارون وفرعون Praise be to Allah our sustainer the creator of humankind and peace and blessings on our beloved Rasul Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم I'm glad to see that we started coming to the masjid and inshallah soon more people will start joining us without the fear of being harmed. Inshallah I'm going to talk about how to replace pride with humility and first of all I need to define uh, the term pride or the Quranic term is kibr as a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned so in our daily life we see people around us. Some, we notice that they are boasting about their wealth. Others, about their position, being famous, being white with the green eyes, dressing up high fashion, including even the shoes and the watch. So it is a combination of reaction, actions, talking, and thoughts. It is not that you cannot speak about yourself, but the way you speak is the point that we need to pay attention to why it is so serious because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran uh, mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf this is chapter number 7 the ayah number 146 where it says where Allah says سأصرف عن آياتي الذين يتكبرون في الأرض بغير الحق and you have the term سين ألف سأ I shall أصرف I will 
turn away on the day of judgment. Allah will turn away on the day of judgment from those who behave arrogantly with pride toward others without due right. So it seems that this particular type of people violated the balance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established for the earth and for the people where the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized our equality before one another. Yet, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us the free will, so some would violate that balance by acting contrary to the wish of Allah. Not to the will, but to the wish. If Allah will, he'll change anything. He'll change everything. He will make all of us act perfect. But because of the free will, Allah wishes something. And sometimes some people violate things against the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The root cause of arrogance or kibr can be found in the beginning of life when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and how Allah instructed Iblis to bow or to recognize this power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established on earth. But instead, Iblis refused to recognize. And when he was asked, he said, Ana khayrum minh. I am better than him. So th this is exactly uh, this little story which we can uh, expand our knowledge about it by reading more of the tafsir on the meaning of the Quran uh, to find, uh, to uh, help ourselves understand well the concept of this subject. In this, I like to bring two comments. Uh, first one, those who are arrogant to, toward others. And to clarify that, we need a case study, and that's the case of Iblis, as I mentioned his uh, story. The second comment, I need to go to the hadith the words of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he also emphasized the danger of this behavior. As he says, la yadkhulul jannah. A person shall not enter the jannah on the day of judgment. Man kana fi qalbihi mithqala dharratin min kibr. Whoever had in his or her heart a small, yes. tiny bit of arrogance will not enter the Jannah. So at that, the Sahaba, the companions of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they get confused about this term, kibr or arrogance. So one of them, uh, he, he says, he said, oh, Rasulullah, a person likes to wear uh, beautiful clothes to, to look uh, clean, to look uh, sharp, uh, with, with 
a, a beautiful uh, choice of dress, jacket, whichever, and a person would like to have uh, to wear a shiny shoes. So it means, is this arrogance? So Ar Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained, he said, no. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves beauty. And then he defined the term. As he says, arrogance means ridiculing others, rejecting the truth, and despising people. So three things here are uh, important to keep in mind, and then we, we can try to think about them. Think about them in what way? Would you like someone else to behave toward you like that? Despise, ridicule, rejecting the truth. You tell him something which is truth and they reject that. Would you like other people to behave toward you in such a way? And of course your answer will be no. Definitely. Then if you don't like others to behave toward you in such a way, then definitely you don't need to act toward people in that way. Otherwise, when, when we give ourselves the license to be arrogant and to deny the truth and to argue and to humiliate others, when we give ourselves the license to do all these things, that's arrogance. That's the, the pride uh, itself. It means we see ourselves up. It's like in some countries, in particular third world countries, not necessarily Muslim countries, but in third world countries, you find the caste system. In, in many occasions, I, I would see the poor would stand up and bow to the rich person because he's expecting little money from the rich person and the rich person is so happy that his being or she treated like a god. We see uh, these things. That's why we can understand why this behavior, this kind of behavior is so serious that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on the day of judgment, such people will be deprived from my rahmah. I will turn away from those who behave arrog arrogantly toward others. It means Allah will withdraw his grace and that person will be deprived from the grace and the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometime I watch closely cases of people uh, who behave in such a way and I would simply uh, see that the background of their life is full of misery so they try to show using something they have others do not have they try to show something so that they can balance their mentality. And that's, that's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will, I will keep them away from my grace, the grace of Allah and the kindness of Allah. And, and those people may have a miserable life inside so they cannot survive except by humiliating others. Kibr or pride, let's see why it is something serious. Let's go to the Quran and see how many times this word is mentioned. 66 times is mentioned in the Quran in different forms for different aspects of life. 
like you, you have kibriya, you have the word mutakabbir, you have the word al-mutakabbir, al-mutakabbirin, istikbar, al-mustakbirin, and the word kibr itself. All of them, they have the same uh, meaning. So it means if, if we are to look at this quality of behavior, which is negative, it means pride can be our worst enemy. It's a very difficult to fight the enemy without us. You can, sometimes you pay attention to, to those around you, but there are many enemies within us that we need uh, to fight. And while our sin may lead us further from Allah, pride is the one sin that can give birth to other sin called sinful orientation. And, and this is here where we need to pay attention. As many people, they say, oh, if, if, if they, those who act with the pride, they are acting uh, uh, against Allah. But what we will see that those people are acting against themselves. It's not the issue, just uh, it is a sin. And there is a great punishment for the sin. It is also something will be born within us. For example, pride can lead to lying. You are so proud that you do not want to admit that you are wrong. You may lie, and lying is a sin against ourselves before anything else. And uh, thus, the Quran teaches that pride is a sin, jealous is a sin, hate is a sin, and evil thoughts are a sin. And all of them it can be a combination of uh, pride. And pride can turn us becoming selfish, impatient, and a little insecure, make more mistakes, and becoming out of control. In, in uh, Surah An-Nahl, that's chapter 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he does not like al-mustakbirin. He does not like those who act with pride. And uh, look, Read the story of uh, Qarun, for example. Read the story of Pharaoh. I think we are familiar with both personalities. And we can see that uh, the Qarun, uh, he had great wealth. And if he, when, whenever he is asked, uh, how did you make this wealth? He said, oh, I worked hard for it. And then, at the end, he was destroyed. His wealth was destroyed. Pharaoh, he used to say, Ana al -ala, I am the God. So th these are examples of uh, pride mentioned uh, in, in the Quran. And uh, so what, what we do here, it's not just we, uh, we present the problem, but what is the solution of the problem? So we need to replace, if, if I mentioned well, I said that it is our greatest enemy. So un unless you replace this enemy, unless you replace this kind of behavior, you will not be able to solve uh, the problem. And you need to, re re to replace something called tawadu'a and make it part of your behavior so that you can destroy uh, pride and, and arrogance. And uh, in, uh, in, in hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he explained is that tawadu'a is to humble yourself. 
when talking or dealing with others. Like you hear about a Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Someone looked at him and he became so frightened. So he said to him, hold on, hold on. I'm a son of a woman. I used to eat dry meat, dry bread from Mecca. And a little child would uh, uh, take the hand of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he will keep his hand in, in, in the hand of, of the child, uh, doing whatever, taking him where, anywhere that the child wants. That's the behavior of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because if you don't do that, then the other behavior will take over. And uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, ما تواضع أحد لله إلا رفع. The one who displays humbleness or humility towards another, Allah exalt them on the day of judgment. And during their earthly life, they will have a peaceful personality. They have peace within themselves because they see themselves humble all the time and they are able to solve the challenges and the problems of life uh, around them. The, the word now, uh, humility, tawadu, is mentioned in the Quran in different terms. And we are familiar with some of the terms like dhul, villa, a dhul. So when emphasizing the treatment of parents, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, وَاخْفِدْ لَهُمَا أَخْفِدْ is lower toward them or for them. جَنَاحَ is the wing. الذل the humbleness. من الرحمة جناح الذل من الرحمة like uh, uh, elevate yourself humble yourself toward your parents. It is mentioned, this is mentioned in the Quran. And when Luqman was advising his son, uh, what did he say to him? And, and you find that in Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17, where Allah says, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Do not walk on earth with pride. <laughs> you will not be able to dig the earth. And you, you, cannot, you, you can be so tall that you won't be able to reach the sky. This is, this is just for us to, uh, to understand how humbleness can benefit us. In addition to that, you go to Surah Al-Furqan, chapter number 25, and you find this ayah, وَعِبَادُ Rahman. And this is the, 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 the first ayah, or the ayah number 63, in fact, where it says, عِبَادُ Rahman. Ibad, those who obey the teachings of Allah. He said, Abdul Rahman. He is, he is the servant of Allah. Ibadul Rahman. Who are those Ibadul Rahman? They walk on earth moderate with humility. And uh, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now, Allah says to him, وَخْفِدْ جَنَاحَكَ lil Lower, humble yourself toward the believers. And also, uh, the thing that is, that we need to take it seriously, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is in chapter number three, Al-Imran, you find uh, this, this ayah, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا 
غليظ القلب so if you are like a hard hearted person rude لا نفضوا من حولك said so be careful the people will turn away from me, from around you if if you are to behave rudely with arrogance even if you are carrying the quran even if you are carrying the most precious message for human for humanity you are calling people to islam and you are in such a way acting or giving the message with arrogance people will not take you serious they will turn away uh, from from you rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam has like many qualities that we need uh, to look at it and uh, uh, he would say uh, that that we know that he he would milk the cow belong to an old lady that if she did not do it if she if she did not milk the cow then she cannot survive so he will come and he would do that uh, abu abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu after him when he was the caliph he followed the same thing he would do the same thing umar radiyallahu ta'ala all the khulafa all the, the 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 people who were in charge of the affairs of of the ummah used to humble themselves uh, with the, with the people and uh, uh, rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam also he would he would go to uh, an, an old lady with orphans around her and he will make the dough for her he would make the bread so, uh, th- so there are uh, uh, many things that we need to learn about uh, this subject let's uh, ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mercy upon us and upon this ummah aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alazim li wa lakum الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين as we going through the last phase of this pandemic disease Uh, it is important for all of us uh, once we get the turn be vac- take the vaccine because it is uh, i- important for us and for others i i, I know many uh, i know many people they they did not take this pandemic disease seriously enough and they ended up not hurting themselves but hurting their loved ones that's the 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 important a young person uh, can say well uh, nothing will happen to me but i i'm i'm aware of many young people who took the uh, the virus without knowing and they gave it to their parents and their parents could not survive so this this issue is important and uh, inshallah once all of us are vaccinated we can get together we, we can do many things we we are unable to do it now i pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring relief to uh, all of those across this world who are facing uh, so much of heartache hardship and pain and suffering and may allah bring them uh, relief and ease uh, their suffering and grant them comfort and tranquility uh, I, i would like 
to always emphasize that, that your safety at this masjid uh, uh, and your well-being uh, will always be the main concern of the administrators uh, who are taking care of this facility. It is the house of Allah and alhamdulillah so many volunteers as you see them they are uh, taking care of you and they are taking care of the masjid and giving you good a chance to come and pray with with safety so i urge you in exchange to donate to to this house of allah as much as you can especially as you know now uh, it's a uh, it's winter it is cold you need to have the place heated well that's more expenses and and also the month of ramadan is coming and i'm sure there will be more expensive expenses also to prepare this place for uh, the month of ramadan and inshallah we the taraweeh uh, will be held. I'm praying that the situation will be much better to have the taraweeh. So uh, with that, please consider giving a small gift as, as you leave this Islamic center. May Allah help us uh, benefit from uh, the, the coming days and may Allah help us uh, prepare ourselves to fast the month of Ramadan with uh, sincerity and with comfort. Allahumma ya Rabbana ya Rabbal Alameen inna nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina wa nas'aluka ilman nafi'a wa qalban khashi'a wa lisanan hafidan dhakira. اللهم اعف عنا واعتق رقابنا من النار واجعلنا من السعداء في الدنيا وفي جنات النعيم في الآخرة اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمسلمين وللمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى جميع المسلمين وارحم موتانا أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu Anna Ilaha Illallah, Ashadu Anna Ilaha Illallah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Hayya Sana, Hayya Sana, Hayya Sana, Hayya Sana, Khamat Sana, Khamat Sana, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La Ilaha Illallah, Daim Al Ilaha Illallah, Sayyidina Muhammad. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استقيموا إلى الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله سووا صفوفكم ولا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم صلوا صلاة مودع